Good morning, folks. We've got terrible weather, a terribly stubborn phi angle in the solar wind, bad climate news for Europe, and more. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was absolutely silent, absolutely nothing doing here in the absolute trough of sunspot minimum in the 11-year cycle. Solar flaring is flatlined, no sunspots to fix it either. Solar wind is stabilized at relatively calm levels, leading to geomagnetism riding down steadily into the green. Up in blue there, we whipped around a couple times yesterday, but went right back to the top and bottom of the charts without the slightest hint of riding steadily at 180 degrees. So despite the Earth-facing coronal hole swinging almost out of that position today, we've yet to have the seismic warning light up at its highest level. No major quakes have occurred in a number of days. But the weather is doing enough for everyone. Top events come to western Canada where cold records are falling again, as well as those for record snowfall in some regions. Precipitation at warmer temperatures has blasted Saudi Arabia. Deaths and rescue stats are piling up there in the Middle East. But this was not the only desert hit with floods. The Atacama Desert in Chile is awash after major Andes rains. A waterfall that hasn't activated in 10 years started flowing again, but more importantly, there are a number of communities affected. Some lost everything. Let's go to the science news. We start with Hubble shots released this week of the outer planets. The storms and clouds seen today on Uranus and Neptune are a far cry from the blank ones Voyager saw all those decades ago. Gaia has used its billions of point sources to track the motions of Andromeda, Triangulum, and our Milky Way relative to one another. Still a long ways from collision? Good. Folks, this is extremely cool. The first Magellanic symbiotic recurrent nova. Always great when they find a new one for the recurring nova list, even when they presume it to be a symbiotic binary system. I will remind everyone from our catastrophe series that no binary system has actually been observed at these recurrent nova, only implied. And that takes us to our second nova paper of the day. Now almost a year old, but it's what I had been looking for for a while. So much focus on the binary systems for so many types of nova. So many times, it is only inferred. It turns out that a major journal suggested we look at the other options about a year ago. Thus far, I can promise you, no one has taken the candy. Last two notes are not so good for Europe. The first thing tying precipitation to Central Europe is cosmic rays, meaning that the anti-correlation to solar indices exists, and that means much more rain in the coming grand minimum, and in the winter time, that'll mean more snow. And it turns out that's not only with the cosmic rays creating extra cloud cover to cool parts of Europe during that time, but this part of the world is already starting to see cooling based on increased cloud cover with more vapor in the atmosphere. So in other words, if it's global warming, it will end up chilling parts of Europe. If it's grand solar minimum, there's major cold and precipitation shock coming for Europe. Grand solar maximum is really the time to bet on good weather there. And good news for those there waiting for it, it's only another 300 years away. Got a little minimum to deal with first, the magnetic pole shift, solar-induced seismicity, but hey, like Frosty, it'll be back again someday. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, the podcast yesterday was a ton of fun. Going to do a link list deeper look here soon, and I know how much some of you value those. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.